Please welcome Walter Kowalczyk. Good evening. Now, when I heard about what happened to Gabriel Myers, my heart did a backflip. I think anyone who has a child would agree that something is very wrong with the details of his passing. The question that most people ask is how? How could a child that is so young be capable of a thought process that would lead him to make such a drastic decision? Why wasn't he playing with his toys or video games? Why wasn't he thinking about how much he loved his favorite animal or about his friends and how much he has fun with them playing at recess every day? At what point does a little child start getting unhappy or depressed to the extent that we seen on that day in 2009? Gabriel had a very rough life. We can see a series of people evaluating him and taking interest in him and attempt to get him back to normal. We can see that when the drugs were not working, only more drugs were offered as, as the remedy. Well, I see one thing when I look at Gabriel, my own son. Tyler Kowalczyk was my son. He died Christmas night, 2010. He did not take his own life. Instead, he suffered one of the many side effects of his stimulant ADHD medication, sudden death. If you take the glasses off my son and his hair was cu cut short, he's a spitting image of Gabriel. They probably liked similar shows like Ben 10 and SpongeBob SquarePants. They were especially similar in the aspect that they were being forcibly drugged without informed consent. When Tyler came into my full-time care, he was prescribed Adderall, extended release, 30 milligrams. His mother quoted wild behavior and inability to listen and follow directions and irritability. In my two years as a single father with Tyler, I never seen any of the behaviors that she had talked about. I did observe a child being a child with lots of creativity, imagination, and joy. He was a very happy little boy. Anyone who's seen him would always see him smiling, dancing, and playing. I took Tyler to the doctor every month, but I would rarely see a doctor when I went. Only another 30-day prescription would be handed out. No yearly checkups, no close monitoring, just a refill. I never wanted Tyler on the medication because it turned him into a very lethargic and quiet child, very different than what we were used to seeing from him. I fought with the schools to keep him off the drugs because I did not like the way he was on them. Had I had known that it could kill him or possibly hurt him, I wouldn't have gave up. It was one of the first parent meetings that I had with the school board and DCF attended and they let me know that if I denied the treatment that his mother and his doctor approved that I might be in trouble. Trouble? What did she mean? Were they gonna take my little boy from me? At that point, he had already been on the medication for two years and still failing in school. Now, if the drugs weren't helping him in school, why would they want to continue them? I know now that it was a form of behavior modification. Tyler was on the medication since he was four years old, and at this point, he was six and he would have a coming down effect or a withdrawal from the medication when I would try to take him off of it. <laughs> I now know that stimulants are known to cause severe psychological dependence, and this was the cause of that wild behavior. I tried stricter discipline with Tyler as a way to help him keep him off the medication, but Tyler admitted to me that he was trying his hardest and it seemed he just couldn't function without it. In the two years Tyler was with me, he had turned it all around. He was getting a straight A's and he was becoming a very confident reader. Once he started getting good grades, he would tell me how much he liked school, and that's when he really came into his own. It wasn't a matter of medication or disorders, he just needed some attention. Early Christmas morning, I awoke to find my son at the end of my bed with a big smile on his face saying, Dad, it's time to open presents. I look over with only one eye half open. It's 650. Uh, all right, it's Christmas morning. I jumped out of bed eager to show Tyler what I'd bought him for Christmas, and just as eager to see what Santa Claus had brought him. Today, that day was like a day like any other except for Christmas magic was in the air and everyone could feel the magic and warmth of that beautiful day. Tyler got to spend the rest of his day at his grandparents whom he loved more than life itself and he also got to spend the day with his mother, the love of his life. After a great Christmas day with much more to come on the following Sunday, Tyler went to sleep, only he went to sleep for the very last time. <clears throat> he was found around 1.30 in the morning cold and not breathing. The wonderful paramedic and hospital staff at Wustov Hospital did everything they could, but unfortunately Tyler was already in heaven before they even arrived. My son Tyler loved life to the fullest, and the people that knew him never seen him not smile and not happy. He spent every day doing things he loved. He loved his Cub Scout Pack 337, and during his time with them he pledged his life to public service and worship of God. Tyler loved taking hikes in, in the woods with his Jaja, which is Polish for Grandpa, and he loved all the animals. Tyler's last day on this earth was the most beautiful day. 
When he went to sleep that night, his head must have been spinning with all the wonderful thoughts of his Christmas day and all the people who loved him. Why are children taken from this earth? In the Bible it says in Isaiah 57, 1, the righteous perish and no one ponders it in his heart. Devout men are taken away and no one understands but the righteous are to be taken away to be spared from evil. I think that there was an evil being created by these drugs in Gabriel and Tyler and they were taken away to be spared from it. Tyler's life was cut short by a combination of a very, very scary form of medication and his doctor not running the appropriate test while on the medicine. Ritalin and Adderall are very dangerous substances and should never be given to children. Tyler was only 23 pills into the new medicine when he died. Methylphenidate causes a 500% increase in sudden death in patients and has an FDA black box warning, which, has, which is actually the highest warning that the FDA gives on any prescription medication. Informed consent was not given. I had no idea any of the adverse effects on the medication that they put my son on. Adverse effects like fast pounding or irregular heartbeat, Tourette syndrome, seizures, hallucination, motor tics and verbal tics, difficulty breathing or swallowing, and sudden death. Yeah, you heard me right. They approved a drug to be given to four-year-old children that can give them motor tics, Tourette's, and sudden death. This stuff is on the same DEA list as cocaine and methamphetamines. The long-term effects on mental health disorders in the later life of chronic use of methylphenidate is unknown. Concerns have been raised that long-term therapy might cause drug dependence, paranoia, schizophrenia, and behavioral sensitization, similar to all the other stimulants. Psychotic symptoms from methylphenidate can include hearing voices, visual hallucinations, urges to harm oneself, severe anxiety, euphoria, grandiosity, paranoid delusions, confusion, increased aggression, and irritability. Now why would they put any child on this poison? I honestly trusted my child's doctor to know what's best for him, and I think that was the biggest problem. I was a single parent and didn't even think to question the doctor or the medication. There's over 4 million children on stimulant ADHD medication in this country, so apparently I'm not alone. I, in coalition with Tyler's grandfather and grandmother, had started the Tyler Kowalczyk Foundation shortly after his death. Using the domain ADHDecide.org, we are helping get the word out to teach the public about the truth of the, about what is happening to our children. In our one year as a foundation, the Tyler Kowalczyk Foundation has saved lives. I per personally know of more than 30 children who have been taken off the drugs since Tyler's death. That is more than 30 children that have a chance to grow up drug free exactly how God intended. We pass out informational flyers and pamphlets. We post blogs and we have social networking sites. We have a website filled with all the information that a parent would need to fight the schools and learn how to help your gifted child excel in school and social activities instead of trying to convince them that they're sick and they need medication. In 2011, the Tyler Kowalczyk Foundation teamed up with the Citizens Commission of Human Rights and together we're going to continue fighting for the right to informed consent. We'll never understand why Tyler left so fast and we didn't have a chance to save him. Also, we will never stop fighting for him and to make sure that what happens to him stops happening to our children. Tyler Kowalczyk and Gabriel Myers should not have died when they did and for their beautiful lives being cut so short, there has to be retribution and something has to change with the way things are going in this country. I will do whatever it takes to spread the word of these killer medication to make sure Gabe and Tyler's death can be a catalyst for a change. Yeah! Woo! I'd like to close with a poem that I wrote for Tyler after his passing. It shed some light into the pain that has uh, come into my life since he's been gone. Tyler, this one's for you, buddy. I spent some time thinking about some of the things we shared. I reminisced about some stuff. I can almost feel him there. I picked up his shirt and I held it close and I wept. I went and laid in his old bed where he slept. I kissed a picture of him and I started to cry. I'm puzzled at why he's gone. I can't understand why. I listened to a song I had not heard in so long. I knew you'd like it and you'd try to sing along. I wish I could share everything with you like before. I wish I could buy you everything at one of your favorite stores. As the tears drop and my world is continuing to fall, I know in my heart that you were the meaning of it all. I feel like I let you down. I wish I could have known. I'm very sorry that I let that poison in our home. I love you, Tyler. It's getting late. And with your death and our fight, I have a lot on my plate. Daddy's going to stay busy, but you'll always be near. I am the one driving the road of life, but I'll let you steer. Whisper to me gently in every breeze of air. Touch me with your light and let me know that you're there. God blesses us sometimes in ways we can't reason. We cannot desert him, for that would be treason. He is our father, our protector, and our guide. Sit back, hold on tight, because it's going to be a bumpy ride. You got to skip all the tough stuff. You warped ahead. You got to go right to the end of the game instead. 
You win. High score. You are number one. You are not only mine, but you are also Jesus' son. He'll watch over you until I get there. Tyler and Dad in heaven, nothing could compare. We can play all day, every day now. You won't need school. You know everything anyhow. I won't waste time with the things I did. No time for anything else, just me and my kid. Does that sound good? Do we have a date? Because I'm looking forward and I simply cannot wait. So I'm going to go to sleep now and dream of you and me, playing in heaven just as happy as we can be. When I wake up, I'll be one step closer, for heaven awaits me when this world has closure. Good night, Tyler Kowalczyk, a.k.a. Tyler the Great, until we meet for our eternal heavenly play day. I love you, Tyler Kowalczyk. Thank you, everybody, for listening to my story, and may God bless our children.